Rachel. Hi. I'm so excited to have you here. I love that we have a history, but before yes. we get to that, you are the founder of She Reads Truth, which right. has been around for how long? We are coming up on nine years. Most amazing organization you've reached. So Thank many you. people. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I am. You know I'm. Yes. You know I'm your biggest cheerleader. And with that said, that's not how we met, and so I just wanted to mention that here. That's a lot real, of people yeah. don't know it. Yeah. It was how many years ago? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. um, our babies passed away on the same day, and that's they're um, buried next to each other. They're next to each other. So it was not the way that we would have um, wanted to meet, but we've traveled a lot of ground together. Yeah. And the most important thing is I have seen you in those situations. I have seen you in celebratory situations. Mm -hmm. I've just sort of been able to have this bird's eye view of the way that you have lo loved God throughout this entire process. Yeah. And I love it when the good guys win. I yeah. love what you're doing. And oh, so I love that. it's true. It's so, been fun to, not fun. It's been really holy and wonderful mm -hmm. to walk with you and to, um, through that and your ministry and to hear you speak well of Christ oh, through so much you. of that. Let's yeah. just keep talking about Let's each other. Let's just keep talking about each other. <laughs> but for those reasons, and just because I really do honor you as a person, and yeah. we have talked obviously off camera about the way that our walks with Christ look and the way that they've... Yeah changed and obviously you've come into many different seasons of that so I would love to know and I think other people would too because we're sort of curious about how other people are handling scripture yeah, absolutely um, for you personally as the years have passed do you have certain ways that there are patterns or rhythms in the way you study scripture or and that can be as specific as like your daily walk or yeah. just an overarching has that changed or it absolutely changes Okay. Because our lives aren't the same from one day to the next, right. and our years aren't the same, and yeah. So I mean, I'm thinking back 13 years ago oh. to when we first met, and my Bible reading habit looked very different yeah. than, than it does, and then it did a year later and 10 mm -hmm. years later. Absolutely. I, but I actually love that. I love that there is there are boundaries that can be stretched in that, and I think sometimes we just feel so yeah. tight, like it has to look this way, it has to be this. Yeah. But fundamentally, understanding Scripture from beginning to end, yeah. not a small task. Right. But in your world, how does that, the understanding of the Bible relate to your real life? Because I think it's super easy for us to say, black and white, kind of set aside, distant, doesn't yeah. really apply. How do you feel like understanding the Bible? Well, I think that there are long-term benefits to <clears throat> the, the long life of, of mm. reading scripture. And I don't think that, if you don't have a long life of reading scripture, mm. that that today isn't a great day to start either. Yeah. Um, I think that there, like I spoke of the last 13 years that we've known each yeah. other, I think there have been days where my Bible reading habit has looked more like a Tuesday kind of a reading mm. habit where, and by that I mean like the average day, Yep. right? Like I yeah. don't know, I think we think of Tuesday as the average day. Absolutely, so like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, there, were, there are lots of seasons in my life where it's just been like, this is an important thing. I know it's important and I want the way that I live my life to yeah. reflect what I believe. Absolutely. Um, and then there were also absolutely seasons that were not Tuesday. You yeah. know, there were some really dark valleys where you're going to scripture for air. Yeah. Um, and then also there are times where you're going to scripture for just to celebrate, to worship. Yes. I want to use the words of scripture to I love praise that. the God of scripture, right? I love that. And that all exists in scripture. Right. You can find all of that. That's really good. I don't know that people necessarily think about going to celebrate. I yeah. feel like yeah. there's a lot of like how to or advice or like verses that I can cling to. But Advice for Christian living yes. or, you know, why, what does the Bible believe about yes. this or say about this? Absolutely. Um, but to go use scripture, use the words of scripture to talk to God. And there mm. are uh, the whole spectrum of emotions, especially in the Psalms. Yeah. Um, but I think that um, for me, I think, you know, something that we tell our community when they commit, like when they say, okay, I want to, I want to be a Bible reader. Yeah. I think I tell them two things. One, I tell them to lower their expectations. Mm. And by that, I mean, I think that we come mm. at Bible reading with like, it it's has good. to look a certain way. It has to, um, every time I read the Bible has to feel a certain way. Yeah. Um, and it needs to take a certain amount of time. My Bible reading experience needs to look like her Bible reading experience. Absolutely. And so I think like to just say like, hey, lower your expectations. Yeah. Take the pressure off. Right. If you can just open the word today and then come back tomorrow and open it again. Like, Absolutely. That's what we're looking for. 
Um, and then the other thing I would absolutely say is raise your expectations. Mm. And just like you think you know what yep. you're going to find there. Yeah. You have no idea. I, uh, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So yeah. we are clearly in an interesting time. Yeah. Um, how, I'm so curious to ask this because I love to ask it of anyone and because we have been through stuff. How do you find comfort? Mm in the word. It's funny, it sounds like such a cheesy turn of phrase, but the first thing that comes to mind truly is that comfort finds me. Like mm, when I'm in the I word. I love that. Honestly, I think that I, I remember sitting in my living room a couple of months ago, everybody had gone to bed and I was just in, I think I was reading Hebrews and, um, and I read about that Jesus, our high priest is seated at the mm. right hand of God. And, um, and the thing that struck me, I'd read that passage lots of times, and I wasn't going to scripture for comfort, but yeah. comfort found me because mm. I thought, I, here's what I know. I know that the spirit is in the room with mm. me. I know that the spirit is here. Um, but I hadn't thought about the fact that my savior was in the throne room of heaven. He could wow. look like in that moment, mm. he had all eyes on me and all eyes on heaven that like is at the same time. Beautiful. And it just felt like, wow. it felt okay. Like I just felt mm. like I felt, um, small in a good way. Isn't that the best? Yeah. I do feel that way. Yeah. I think it's why I love oceans and the sky yeah. and things that yeah. make me feel Exactly. Small. I think when things feel that vast and that uh, just beautiful, you just yeah. think like, this is not about me and yet I'm invited into this. And it's the same God yeah. who does that and still. And that's the case for me and everyone. That's right. And that's the case like for somebody who's opening scripture for the first time, like Spirit is with you. Yeah. Like we, I talk about like the director's commentary. You get that. Mm. And it may not feel like it right at first, but like if you open scripture and ask the spirit to, to be with you to and to teach to you it. and yes. yeah. And to, I mean, that, that was written by the Holy Spirit. Mm. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it's for us to understand. And it's for us it's to understand. It's not this, you know, I feel like sometimes people are so intimidated that yeah. they're not smart enough. They don't have a degree. They yeah. don't. And it's. Yeah. That's exactly, it's written for us. And then so. when you read all of scripture, like I talk about the long-term benefits of knowing scripture over time. And mm. so like you may open the book of Numbers and go like, huh, yeah. where does this fit? How does this yeah. make sense? And you're going like, okay, I'm going right. to look at this and I'm going to look for God here. I'm going to try and understand the character of God more here. How does this relate? Yes. I was talking with a friend the other day and we were actually talking about the book of Mark and we were talking mm. about the woman who reached out and, and mm. touched the woman with the bleeding issue. Yeah. She touched um, just the, the tassel of, yeah. of Jesus' garment. And um, it was my friend Lauren and she was saying that um, if you read Numbers, mm. like we know that like a rabbi would wear a garment with a tassel on it and the four tassels on the garment are to mm. remind you that, you that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And so when that woman reached out and touched his tassel, oh, it's beautiful. he turned to her and said, yes. daughter. Yes, that's exactly right. And it's just this, like the thing that you would otherwise miss. Absolutely. Had you not, and that doesn't mean like, oh, you're going to miss this, so don't read it. Right. It means like, keep reading because that's every so good. time, every time I read scripture and especially with a friend, especially mm -hmm. with a friend, I, I learn something, I see something new. And that like, and that doesn't mean like, you don't, you don't have to know it all at once. No. It just means this is worth it. I love that you brought that up because yeah. that is really the heart of Woven yes. is to connect because there's this depth to the New Testament yes. that you can't grab a hold of unless you understand what the beginning was, what the prophecy was, why that's significant in that's the right. New Testament. That's and right. so um, I just appreciate you so much yeah. and you've done such a great job of explaining mm -hmm. really the heart of the project that I'm working on. Yeah. So I love you dearly. One more thing I'll tell you because I think it will be really like encouraging mm. to you like and to your friends. I was reading Mark again the other day yeah. and, um, and I, I love the first line you get from Jesus in his ministry in the book of Mark where he says, repent and believe the kingdom mm. of heaven is here, is near. Um, and so I was like, I wonder in the other gospels, like what are his first words in the other gospels? Yes. And so I'm like, I just got to know. And two of them, uh, in two of the gospels. I hate to say I don't remember. I'm trying to I think know. like, okay, wait. In <laughs> both, in two of them, um, his first words are, it is written. Huh. He's responding to the devil. And I just thought that feels significant to wow. me. And so Jesus in that case is talking about the Old Testament. His first words Beautiful. in his ministry in the New Testament is to say this matters. And this oh, totally Rachel. informs. What that is here. so powerful. Yeah. 
I'm going to steal it. Do it. It's and yours. I'm not going to credit yeah, you. I'm gonna... No, I love that. It yeah. is written. Yeah. That's why we do this. But oh my like, gosh, I mean, that's you, incredible. I was opening Mark and just curious, and I just let your curiosity, it's curiosity. take you places. And you yes. find things that you never would know to find. Yeah. You're so good. You Thank should you have a ministry. Me. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I love you, friend. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.